Right, having downloaded uh, Asirex, let's see uh, what happens next. Well, it will appear on the, uh, the, the bottom line, the toolbar, and if we click this, Asirex will be loaded. What do we see? Well, we see a top line which have, has most of the important tools that you'll need for day-to-day -day function. If we go up to the format um, bar, we can see that we can customize the toolbar and add other important tools. Particularly important tools include the anonymize function. The anonymize function is going to allow us to take the patient name and other important identifying data off. We can put in the import function, which will allow us to import files from the database. And it'll also allow us to put in other important functions, such as uh, the uh, album and uh, source uh, folder. Likewise, if there are folders such as the 4D Viewer, which we feel are not particularly useful, we can delete those by dropping them down into the, uh, the customized bar. Right, now having moved to this stage, we want to look at our database and our albums. They may or may not be visible on the left-hand side. If they're not, if we toggle the album and sources, we will uh, identify the databases on the left-hand side of the screen. We can see at the moment that the database has no films within it. As we load films up into the system using CDs, the number of cases will be identified on the, uh, to the right of the, uh, the database. Now it's very important that um, we add additional folders to the database so that we can hold interesting sets of cases specifically. And we can add these using the, uh, the album folders. And if we toggle on the positive uh, icon, we can see that we can give a sub uh, album and name, in this case MSK, press OK, and that identifies as a subfolder. Now any cases that are currently present in the database can be added and dragged into the MSK folder by drag and drop, and those cases remain on the main database. We can also generate a smart folder. A smart folder or a smart album allows us to generate a, a series of cases, shall we say with a specific uh, name, exam, uh, folder and in that we will have exam case 001 or exam case 002. Now any case that we add which has a patient name or an ident identifier as exam irrespective of any subsequent hieroglyphics or numbers will be added automatically to this smart folder and that's quite a useful function. Now we may want to get rid of those folders, and in order to delete or get rid of those folders, if we identify the, the folder we want to delete, and we then press the negative button, that the folder will be deleted. Now moving on to preferences, if we look in the uh, general preferences folder under Osirix, which uh, will be useful for us to uh, modify when we first set up the uh, database, under the uh, general setting, if we look at DICOM editing, we will see that usually unchecked is the allow DICOM editing. It's important that we check this because this will allow us to edit CT stacks and, and modify the number of uh, CT images in the stack. Then if we move to the database uh, option, there are a couple of important points. Under the copy files to the Osirix database folder, it's important that we um, we click on the always and then automatically films which we are importing or by CD will move on to the CD database and you won't always be asked uh, whether or not you wish to do this and the second important point under this uh, particular window is under the uh, HD free space um, it would usually delete files if there was less than five gigabytes of free um, memory in this case it is best to uncheck this and then files will not be automatically uh, deleted. And the, the final of the preference uh, windows is the uh, CD preference. Uh, the first of these, which is currently unchecked, uh, automatically add images into the database when the CD is mounted. We should check this and then every time we put a CD in, it will automatically be updated without asking you to do so. And secondly, we should uncheck the subsequent one, which stops images being deleted uh, from the database when the CD is removed. Um, according to this now, with it deleted, as soon as the CD is ejected, the information will be maintained on that uh, database. Right, uh, importing uh, images. Well, the way the system is now set up, 
when you put a CD into the, uh, the CD bay, the CD will automatically load up to the database. But what happens if we're importing images from uh, other sources, such as a USB or uh, somewhere from uh, another data source? If we go to import, we can, in this particular case, we're identifying a CD-ROM, but we could equally identify the USB. And within, the, within this, we'll see that there will be a DICOM folder if we and the the pattern of files will vary according to the source and we can now import from at any different level this DICOM folder has a number of patient examinations patients one two three etc and if we at this particular point select to open the DICOM file it will import all of those patients but if we then identify PA1 patient 1 it will identify that patient alone or we can go any step further along to the individual uh, uh, series if needs be. And then those films will be imported into the database uh, and it can be aborted at any point if any mistake has been made during the uh, importation selection. We've imported our first patient uh, named Mr. Joe Bloggs. And if we look at Mr. Bloggs, we can see that there's a, a, a drop-down menu. If we turn the arrow downwards, it identifies to us which examinations are actually in that subfolder. But if we look at the bottom, we can see icons of these images as well, uh, which would include the re request cards, scout images, etc. Now, moving on from this, uh, we might wish to uh, anonymize this data, because we obviously don't want to know any, uh, for anyone else to know so Mr. Joe Bloggs. And if we press on anonymize, and we're now in version 3.7, we'll um, give another explanation for anonymization in 3.8. Uh, 3.7, we'll see this is the, uh, the page that comes up. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to generate a subfolder in the, on the main database to which we'll export our anonymized files. So if we um, come down to Documents, we can generate a new folder which we will title anonymized and create and then we will go on to anonymize the data for this patient now it's important that we anonymize very many uh, issues the patient's name, the patient's ID, the patient's age and date of birth the institution, the referring physician, the accession number and also the study ID now, if we, we also at this point need to, in the anonymized um, area adjacent to the patient name, we need to give this patient some uh, identifier for future reference. So let's say it's case 001, and then we will anonymize that patient, saving the patient data to the anonymized folder. We're also putting in the uh, a duplicate of the uh, patient data into the patient ID folder uh, to prevent future problems with importation. It's not something we need to worry about now, but it's advisable that we do do this.